Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at something special, and that is how much of an effect does tilting an inverted V have? This is what I call the inverted V study. Now, a normal dipole is straight. Uh, you can bend the leads down like this. It's called an inverted V. Uh, but the question is, how much can you bend the leads down before you start affecting the performance significantly? And so I did a, a study with um, um, modeling the uh, uh, antennas, and I'm going to show you the results of the study. They're actually um, quite interesting. I, I had expected a much poorer showing of antennas that were really steep, but uh, that's not the case. Let's turn to the computer. I have a few um, slides to go through. Before we jump into the charts, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Ed Roundtree, who is a very recent new patron of this channel. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's take a look at those charts. The goal of the inverted V study is to do things with a 20 meter dipole, basically by bringing down the ends. To simplify things, we're going to put the standard 20 meter dipole at a half wavelength height, which is, uh, let's see, 33 feet. Okay, we're going to look at several inverted V configurations of the same antenna with 120 degree, 90 degree, and 60 degree central angle. Note that most sources say that the central angle should be 120 degrees, but we're gonna get a little radical. We're gonna look for pattern differences, gain differences, SWR differences, and so on. And uh, here are the antennas that we're looking at. This one up here is our standard dipole. It's straight out. Uh, it's at a, a half wavelength height and it's a half wavelength long. Okay, our standard dipole. Then the 120 degree central angle is from across this angle over to here. It's 120 degrees. So it's 60 degrees either side of straight down. Then we'll do the 90 degree central angle where these uh, wires are at right angles to each other. And so that means 45 and 45 is 90 for the central angle. And this, to get just a little bit absurd, we're going to go with the 60 degree central angle, only 30 degrees on each side, 60 degrees between these two right here. This would be considered a, a poor uh, inverted V. People would say, oh, you want this 120 degree central angle. So here are the inputs that I put into the EZNEC 6 Plus software, uh, which I paid for a long time ago. It's available for free now. These are the cases of the pure dipole, um, the length of each uh, section 17 feet on each side to get decent SWR. And then, as you can see, we uh, pull those uh, ends down uh, quite a bit. Let's take a look at the, um, this is the standard dipole right here. Uh, if we were to put the dipole up higher, we would see the start of another lobe on each side. So just keeping it to a single lobe, it's one wavelength high. We get a elevation angle of 30 degrees and a gain of 7.65. Uh, dB over an isotropic antenna. Now, wait a minute, you say. We can't do that. The gain of a dipole is 2.15 times an isotropic antenna. Well, that's correct as long as your antennas are in free space. I have never in my lifetime seen an antenna that is in free space. They're all within distance of ground or some reflecting body. So um, this is the effect of the signal bouncing off of the ground. I've got 
so-called real ground uh, put into the uh, parameters of this simulation. So we show 7.65 dBi gain right here. This outer circle says 0 dB with respect to the gain of the antenna, which is right here. Okay. Now, if we go over here, we're now at 120 degrees, and we see this central part right here starting to move up. So that means we're starting to push more radiation up instead of the direction of the max gain, which is 33 degrees. See, as you do this, the uh, cursor elevation, the, the radiation angle goes up. The gain, however, is 6.83. It's less than 1 dB less than the gain over here. Now let's take our more radical examples. Here is the 90 degree gain where we see we've come up a ways here. We're getting closer to an antenna that points straight up, but we're still not pointing straight up. We have a 34 degree cursor elevation and a gain of 6.36. So if we compare that over here with our 6.83, it's not hugely different. Okay, and now this one is our radical one. This is the one here where we've got only a 60 degree central angle in it. And what we're seeing here is yes, we're pushing more radiation skyward. So this could function uh, sort of as an inverted, this could function sort of as an NVIS antenna. Our radiation angle now it's 35 degrees, gain 5.77. So if you compare that 5.77 with the dipole 7.65, that's about 2 dB of gain loss. Okay, the more you bring the legs together, the less gain you have. Now I want to show you something very interesting in uh, the results of the SWR. This is the SWR, the standard dipole, just under 1.5. Now, if you read the fine print down here, it says that the impedance is 73 uh, ohms, 74 ohms, uh, with a bit of a phase angle, uh, about uh, 14 degrees of a phase angle, puts it here. Now, as we bring those legs down, the impedance comes down from 73.72 to 66.94. And so we get a better SWR. If you use this with the tuner in your radio, any reflected power here will be shot back at the antenna. So that'll really help. Now let's look at the odd cases. Here is the 90 degree one. Look at this. And the best SWR is right here, and it's really good. See, it's 55 ohms. There is a phase angle, so it isn't zero. Okay, but now let's go to our 90 degree, and oh, it's get bad again. And the reason for that is because now our impedance is 36 ohms. So the amount of droop that you have in the antenna affects the input impedance. Not hugely, but it affects the input impedance. So what are the conclusions of the study? The inverted V configurations are, quote, nearly as effective as a dipole. When you get really wild, you lose up to 2 dB. Uh, the effect of an acute angle is nowhere near as much as I thought. Uh, or I would have thought. I would have thought that it would have been a terrible antenna. It is to dB down, so it is a compromise antenna. But the lesson learned here is that even antennas that break the rules can be effective. So there you have it. We've taken a look at inverted Vs versus dipoles, and we've come up with some interesting conclusions. One is that the dipole at the correct height with the uh, SWR right at the input is uh, about 1.5 to 1 because it's 77 ohm 
uh, right there. As you move the arms down, it's the same as lowering the height of the antenna. The SWR gets better for ways, and then it gets worse again as you go below 50 ohms. But the bottom line here is it doesn't matter that your antenna is straight or perfect. Just get something up in the air. Because we showed that even uh, a <laughs> badly constructed inverted V with a central angle of only 60 degrees like that is still effective. Yeah, it's compromised. You lose a couple dB. But uh, the 90 degree actually gives you a little better SWR. The 120 degree that everybody talks about works. They all work. It's a very interesting outcome of our study. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, go to dkassler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.